Welcome to another video in a series for the Creative Technology Toolkit module for the Creative Technology Master at the University of the West of England. This one is looking simply at setting up our developer envi environment to use the Open Frameworks Toolkit for C++. You can download the Open Frameworks Toolkit for OS X, OS X, Linux, Windows, and also the elements for building for iOS, Android, and to make it run on Linux ARM program, um, uh, platforms such as Raspberry Pi from openframeworks.cc. I've downloaded Open Frameworks, and it's in my Downloads folder. And I've got a completely new install of OS X on this machine. So I'm going to go to my root folder and make a new folder to do work in called developer. And this I'll put my open framework source code in and my own work and have it all tidy in one place. It means if I'm moving from machine to machine I can use the same kind of environment knowing that it should be common between different machines. The thing that's nice about working with C++ is that it's very fast. It's an industrial standard. There are many extensions and add-ons for it and it'll run on OS X, Linux and Windows. And I use a similar folder structure when I'm working on Linux or Windows and when I'm porting code to things like Raspberry Pi for installations and for other work. So moving to my developer folder, at the moment it's empty. In my downloads folder, I've downloaded the zip file for the OS X release of Open Frameworks. And we're currently on version 0.10.1. I'm going to go to my uh, de developer folder and just for speed I'm going to put a link to it and add it to my sidebar so I have a shortcut from downloads. You can take it, drop it in, double click and open up the zip file. Depending upon what platform you're using, you'll have a slightly different procedure, but essentially we'll be working in much the same way. If you have any questions, please do post them into the Slack group or from the Open Frameworks download pages for your operating system, there is a full step-by-step -step guide for how to set up for different development environments, Visual Studio Code, Qt Creator, and Xcode. If you're not certain what that means, essentially they're text editors that allow us to edit the source code simply and give us a load of tools to help us debug and work out what goes wrong when we've typed something wrong or the computer makes a mistake and can't find one of the files that it needs. So moving to my development environment, I can now get rid of my zip file. I don't need that anymore. And inside my OS X folder, I can see a range of different things. As we looked at last time, the important one that I'm interested in is in the apps folder. Inside there is my apps, and this is where my code that I make will go. And I will name projects and add them in. We have an empty example here, which is a fully working example that doesn't do anything, that shows us the structure. The files add-ons make tell Open Frameworks if there are any additional libraries beyond the standard ones that it should be using. Perhaps we've included a library to talk to a Kinect, or a Leap Motion Sensor, or to add granular sound synthesis. In the bin folder, any binary executables, applications that we actually compile, will be stored in here. So when we've compiled them, we can copy them out and send them to other people or share them. If data is associated with that executable of that application, it will be inside the data folder. The config.make are some simple configurations that are standard and probably won't be changed for the moment, telling Open Frameworks and C++ where to find additional pieces of library that it uses for building applications. Here we have just a ping file showing what the empty example will look like. The Xcode project for empty example. This is a file that Xcode, our development environment, uses to help itself organize files and isn't necessarily part of our build is purely because we're using Xcode to help us edit code. The important folder is the SRC, the source folder. And inside here is an H file, which is a header file explaining what our program will contain. 
a main file explaining that we'll be using C++ open frameworks, and then an off app CPP or C++ file, which actually has all our code and routines inside it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got my development environment, and I'm using the development environment app uh, Xcode. So this is the page from the Apple App Store where I can go and download it, and I can download it for free. Depending upon what your operating system version is and what the date is, you may have a slightly different version, but they all work in very similar ways. If you're working on Windows or Linux, you can use Visual Studio Code, Qt Creator, or Visual Studio. The instructions for setting up each of them are on the Open Frameworks download page. And you can follow the links step by step. If you have questions in the community section, there are many um, helpful examples and questions and answers in the forum. Coming back to our Xcode example, <clears throat> I have OS 10 um, uh, Xcode installed. I have um, Open Frameworks version 0.10.1 installed. And I'm going to have a look and just double check that everything is working by running one of the examples. So from the examples folder, I'm going to have a look in 3D. And these are all small programs that are ready to run examples, commented. And I'm going to have a look in the 3D primitives example. If I open up that folder, you can see it's got a very similar structure to our empty example. Our source code, um, add-ons, project configuration. And here, there is a readme file, .md, again in markdown, that explains what's going on, what you should be able to see, and there's helpfully a screenshot as well. So if our program runs correctly, we should see it demonstrating different kinds of primitive 3D objects with some controls and some lighting and shading. The simplest thing that I can do is double-click Xcode project, which will automatically launch our Xcode development environment, and then load the rest of the material, including our source code, from this folder. I have just downloaded it, and this is the very first time that Xcode has run this code. It knows it's code from a developer it doesn't recognize, and it asks for warning. So I just say, yes, I'm pretty sure. Open this up, please. Our Xcode development environment has opened up. In the middle is a code editor where we'll do most of our code editing. At the side is a toolbar which can tell us all sorts of things about our code and help debugging. And on the left-hand side is our project, the name of the project. And we can see, looking down through, the main folders that we're interested in. And for us, the one we're interested in is the SRC, or source folder. If I look in app H, the header file, I can see there's lots of things declared. These are all the objects that our program is going to use. Spheres, cylinders, cones, lights, etc. And these are all things that Open Frameworks understands. If I look in the CPP file, I can see my code for running this example. The simplest thing that I can do right now is come up to the top bar, to the play button, and this will actually build and run our example, and I can see whether everything is working in my setup. So if I click Build, the build will take a little bit of time the first time I run, because it has to build lots of additional libraries that it relies on a standard. When they're built for the first time, everything speeds up because they don't need to be rebuilt. It's only the code that I change that will need to be recompiled. So while we're doing that, I'm going to drink coffee. Bear in mind that if you're compiling this on a faster computer, it will compile faster. And if you're compiling on something like a Raspberry Pi, this could take a while.
So my code has finished compiling, and it's launched an application. And if I hit Apple tab, or go and look at the applications that are running, I can see I have Xcode in the background. I have the video recorder I'm recording this on. And also here is our 3D primitives example as a compiled application running. I can quit Xcode now and our application will still run. And I could take that application, the example debug, 3D primitives, and email it to friends. And that will run on any other similar Mac OS X system or if it were Windows or Linux, exactly the same. It launches in a window, and I can see this is running in real time. It's actually interactive. And down at the side, I can see the FPS that this is running. This is frames per second. And I can use different controls on the keyboard to draw solid shapes, full screen, draw the normals, and these are um, objects at right angles to surfaces as part of the 3D computer graphic calculation that helps us work out which things can be seen, which things should be in shadow, etc. I can switch on and off the lights, so I can actually see the lights as objects as they move around in space. And I can texture them, and at this point, actually, we can see it's live texturing with video as I'm talking, which is kind of cool. And if I run this full screen, you can see that as I'm talking to you, we're actually live video mapping onto these interactive 3D objects straight off a laptop. And this is a, a few years old now. So you can see some of the power of using C++ over other development environments that are perhaps a little simpler. But the speed that we have and the flexibility that we have to do very, very complicated things fairly quickly is quite impressive. So I can explore lots of the different modes. I can render the lights. I can draw the wireframes or not and see them as solid or rounded objects. I can draw solid faces or not. And when I've finished, I can close my window or quit the application. And now I know that the whole development environment is working and I can build my own software and the machine will run the software that I've built. If I come back to my development folder, as I said earlier, in the 3D examples folder, we have our 3D primitives. This is the standard setup for a, an open frameworks project, which will be similar on Mac, Windows, and Linux. In the source code are the three files that I saw in my editor. The header file, which describes some of the objects that are going to be used in my program. The main CPP or C++ file, which describes the setup, what to do on update, how to draw things to the screen, and the main, which is a simple file that allows Open Frameworks to set up a window and run its code. You can see these in the SRC in the source folder here. There's a README file for this example, and we can see, helpfully, whoever made this wonderful example, and the great folks at Open Frameworks, has put a screenshot in, and it looks like what we run. And now inside the bin folder is actually an executable um, application called 3D Primitives Example Debug. And if I get info on that, just like any other Mac application, you can see it has a file size, it's an application the kind of application, uh, when it was created, etc., has an icon. And if I double click this now, that runs our application. So we've built a shrink wrapped Mac OS X application just like that. And you can do exactly the same. And I can take this now, duplicate it, and send it to my friends, rename it, do whatever I would like with it.